First weekend is in the books of March Madness, the NCAA tournament, some big upsets, so a lot of teams that you might have thought got through did get through. Now we're at the Sweet 16, it starts to get tighter, a little tenser, the pressure rises. We're going to help you get through it, we're going to help you get through the next week, we're going to help you get through the entire tournament. Hi everyone, I'm Paul Vini here again with you, joined by my panel of experts, Darren Everson, Rachel Bachman, and Ben Cohen. Uh, big weekend, huh? Are we That's still experts after everything that transpired? I, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. know. We'll find out because we're going to talk about the brackets for a second. But let, let's start with, you know, look, these things are always the big news is the upsets. Rachel, mm -hmm. what was the biggest upset this weekend? It had to be Norfolk State. I yeah. mean, I, if anyone had that in their bracket, I want to copy them from mm. now until eternity <laughs> because they were a huge underdog. We were just talking about how you can make an argument that they should have been a 16 seed, and as we know, 16 seed has never beaten a one right. in men's basketball. So for them to come out of um, winning their conference tournament and uh, win a game like that, be a two seed, it's it's pretty, um, uh, pretty unusual. Really big deal. How much momentum does that give them now? Well, Norfolk what? State, I mean, unfortunately not enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, right, that, that game against exactly. Florida didn't go very well. Uh, let, let's talk for a second about a 16 seed that almost won mm -hmm. Syracuse I mean by the skin of their teeth they got through mm -hmm. did, did they get some favorable calls there at they the did end? A, a couple but but Syracuse is probably gonna win that game and and the interesting thing to me is that there was so much momentum against Syracuse losing that game everyone was talking this is the one that's most vulnerable mm -hmm. in a long time and then in the next game in their in their eight first nine they were really in control of that game yep. the whole time mm -hmm. and now they play a team in Wisconsin that you know, there there are much tougher fours out there. Wisconsin likes to slow it down. Syracuse could pretty easily get into the Elite Eight at this point, I think, mm -hmm. even after that, even after getting a few right. uh, a few questionable uh, calls. That, that had to scare a lot of people, certainly a lot of Syracuse fans. Uh, it, how clear is their path to the Final Four? Not very clear at all. <laughs> because, I mean, you know, I would have picked Syracuse to get there if they still had their big man, Pat Mello, right. because you look at the potential matchup with Ohio State in the Elite Eight, Ohio State is all about Jared Sullinger, their big man in the middle. Sullinger is, he's kind of your classic college big man in that he's not very tall, he doesn't get a whole lot of lift in terms of uh, his jump. So when he plays against real big men, people who are bigger than he is, right. he struggles. But Syracuse doesn't have doesn't their big man. have big man, right. Mm -hmm. now, so, uh, I want to talk about Kentucky for a second, because I think it was their second game, right? They just, I mean, sure. demolished them. Uh, how good does Kentucky look right now? I think Kentucky is the team in the tournament that if they're at their best, yeah. no one's beating them. They have yeah. An, yeah. another level that no one can even match. I mean, they they do some things. I mean, you tune in to like for like four or five minutes, and you'll see them. You'll see the other team not get a shot off while Kentucky comes down and gets five dunks in a row. I mean, they are. If they go through this tournament, I mean, they might be one of the best teams of all time. I mean, they mm -hmm. have the talent and. They're doing something that, so far at least, is is pretty monumental. All that said, they're playing a team that beat them. Earlier in the and year. all that said, John true. Calipari still hasn't won a national it's title, and that's I think that's going to be the big story uh, over the next two weeks. All right, let's talk about we through the first weekend. Let's do a little review here. How are our brackets looking? Ben's doing all right. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, yeah. you, I mean, you still have North Carolina, but you have to be a little concerned with yeah, the injury I, if situation. I, if, I, if someone had told me that Kendall Marshall wouldn't be playing potentially in the Sweet 16 or Elite Eight, or the Final Four, that I wouldn't have picked the Tar Heels. I sure. mean, Kendall Marshall's the guy that makes yeah. that team go. Without him, picking Carolina is like, I don't know, picking Duke to get out of the first round or something. We know how, we know <laughs> how that works. Yeah, how, how happy were you about that Duke game? That you, can say it. you can say it. You can allow it to come out. How, you, how was your bracket? Looking? Actually, well, I, I picked Kentucky on this show, um, mm -hmm. and I'm very glad I did. But in my blind bracket, I picked Kansas. And actually, that's looking OK yeah. right now, because it looks like they're going to match up with Carolina yeah. in the next two rounds from now. And um, as we talked about, Carolina's ailing a little bit. So um, I think that that matchup that looked uh, pretty formidable looks a little bit easier for, for KU right now. Now that that's out of the way, I'm actually in third place <laughs> overall in the journal. <laughs> well, we should point out that this pool is for entertainment purposes only. Of course, of course. Um, but yeah, it's looking really good right now. I mean, um, we were talking before about Michigan State. I, I should say, just for accountability's sake, I didn't pick Michigan State in uh, Wait, our can you pool say that, here. What was that? Can you say that again? Uh, but anyway. <laughs> um, a bit about accountability? Yeah. <laughs> but the, our fi the Final Four is still intact, and the way That's things good. are going, you know, it really does look like, like we were just saying, Kentucky's going to get there. I like Ohio State with Syracuse, obviously yeah. not having their big man. And then we'll see what happens with Kansas. But, you know, you, again, you got to like their chances of getting there just because of what's happened with Carolina with the injury. Right, right. Uh, I have three or four. Three or four of my yeah. Final Four teams are still alive. That's good. Louisville. I picked Louisville to win it all. They're still alive. I'm happy with that. Yeah. I picked Florida State because some stranger mm. on Twitter told me to. Mm. 
<laughs> I swear to God, I did it. I thought, eh, I'll take a flyer. Eh, bad call. Let's move on because this week, now we're going to get the Sweet 16. Mm -hmm. going to get the, now the real games are going to start, right? I mean, the first rounds are exciting. Now the real games are going to start. Let's talk first about the one seeds. Which, they all made it. But which one seed looks the most vulnerable? That's a good question. I, it's it's got to be Syracuse. Yeah. I mean, you know, they, they've got size and, um, you know, they've got the impressive record and everything. But, you know, they, they've got a whole trail of off-the-court distractions. They're missing their big man. And they're just going to, you know, they have to go through the Big Ten. They have to beat Wisconsin. At the, mm -hmm. They have to beat probably Ohio State. And um, can they do it? Maybe. But um, that, doesn't, that doesn't even get in the Final Four. Who, who do you think has the most momentum? going into this next round? I would say Kentucky, although they have a tricky path. I mean, I, I agree with everything Ben said about how this could be a historic team if they end up pulling it off, but Indiana is a team that can score. And if they're actually hot again, as they have been uh, from, from the outside, Indiana could be a problem for them. I mean, that was a home court victory that Indiana had over Kentucky. They obviously had a great shot at the end to win that game, but that is not a walkover by any means. And then Baylor in the next round, potentially, Baylor is as talented as anybody. And if the right Baylor team comes to play, that also is a dangerous game. The funny thing about Kentucky is that they're the only one that's playing a team that they lost to in the Sweet 16. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I would put, you know, I, would, I have the most confidence in Kentucky getting past this round. I mean, does mm -hmm. anyone think that Indiana, I mean, I know that they can, but does anyone think Indiana is going to actually upset Kentucky again? Uh, the but Big Ten has been tough so far. I mean, you saw Purdue last true. night, sh probably should have had Kansas. Really, the only Big Ten team, unfortunately, for two of us here on the panel, Michigan, <laughs> uh, really struggled. But otherwise, Michigan State's looked good, although the St. Louis game was difficult. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think Indiana's going to be feisty. Hey, what, what game are you most excited for in this next round? Which one do you think is be the I, marquee game? I think Kentucky-Indiana, just because it's it's sort of a psychological battle. You know, it's, it's like, okay, Indiana, you did it at home yeah, um, yeah, on yeah. this last second three-pointer. And, and by the way, the guy who threw that pass to Christian Watford is not playing right now. He's injured. <laughs> right, and so, right. um, good point. So, you know, you, ca you kind of wonder if they can recreate the magic without the full team. Kentucky is full strength. As far as I know, no one's even stubbed a toe this year. <laughs> so, um, um, it, it's the ultimate psychological challenge. Can you play your absolute best game? And even then, I think they kind of have to hope for Kentucky to, to mess sure. up. Yeah. I'm kind of interested in MSU Louisville, not just because I picked MSU here on the program, but because if you look at the styles of those two teams, Michigan State, obviously, it's blood ball with them, brute strength, rebounding, whereas Louisville is also a great defensive team. They struggle shooting the ball. Uh, but they also have the quick little guard, Peyton Siva, who plays from the outside. So. That right there could be an interesting matchup. If Louisville actually is hot for once from outside, that could be a competitive game. 